Hello you wonderful people and welcome to episode 5 of the Blacktown Premier League podcast. My name is Mark and this is what's happening in the next 15 minutes. Decided to yeah cancel training so we'll see what effect that will have on, on Saturday night. Similar um, scenario where we dropped a few points early and then that second half of the season we really hit our straps, managed to um, you know get on a roll and then I think it was just a costly couple of games in the first half of the season where we probably could have taken three points. I've got no doubt at all that it's going to be a completely different story this year. Yes, this time I actually did remember to include the preview. Sorry about forgetting to do that last week. I'm sure you were all devastated. I think we have two very interesting match of the round games happening on Saturday and Sunday. Robbers visit Labour to take on Blacktown Workers and Marion feature on Sunday as well. Technically their first game of the season after a round one washout. Cue the intro music. Just as well, by the way, if you are excited about finally returning to football after a rained out weekend, please hit the like button. Let me know you're enjoying what you're seeing, guys. Come on. The Champions League might have just dished up the most entertaining first leg quarterfinal games we've ever seen in the last two days. And of course, the Matildas are steady on course. They're doing really well at the upcoming Paris Olympics. But let's focus in on what's important. Men's and Women's Blacktown Premier League. Okay? Right. I'm going to start with Blacktown Workers because I think that their interview is the most interesting of the three, to be perfectly honest with you. Let's go see why that is. For the first time in 2024, I welcome back a set of champions from last year. Blacktown Workers are here and they have their first match of the round of the season this Saturday night. Darren and new signing Tom Guthrie join us, not at Labert, but instead via Zoom because of certain circumstances. How much detail, Darren, are you willing to let us in on as to why we're meeting on Zoom and not sort of in person tonight? Yeah, look, uh, late notice um, with, with, with the rain management committee and, and the groundsmen here at Labor to have closed the, the fields and, yeah, probably, I'll be honest, due to poor numbers, decided to, yeah, cancel training. So we'll see what effect that will have on, on Saturday night. Uh, Tom, I'll throw it to you now. It was an intriguing start to the season. Uh, very competitive against your old club. The boys came away without any points in first grade. Actually, I might get Darren to jump into this as, as well because I'm not sure if you were actually... Were you present in that game, Tom? I don't, I don't think you are. No, I was actually... Uh, I just came back from two weeks in Japan, so... I was a bit bit bummed out to miss uh, that miss that game. Uh, unfortunately, that was uh, drawn for the first game of the season, but I'll see them for round two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You certainly will. Uh, so, Darren, I'll just continue on. C considering the absentees in that game, were you happy with the performance in that first grade space up against Pons? Yeah, look, both, both sides were missing players, um, Pons and, and ourselves. Both goalkeepers were keeping both teams in. Um, Pond scored very early within the first, I think, 10, 15 minutes. Um, our boys dug deep and got the equaliser just before half time, which is, is always good in football. Um, and I thought the football we were playing, we were playing ourselves into the game. Pond's had a player, second yellow, down the 10 men. And, and unfortunately, you know what it's like um, when you play against 10 men. Um, psychologically, you don't stick to your game plan. And um, yeah, we probably gave some key plays too much room. And unfortunately, yeah, we went down 3-1. It's always hard to, to hear when you have um, spectators from the sideline go, and especially from Pond saying, geez, I love watching your boys play. You play good football, but you know the, the scoreboards don't always show the football that's played, it tells you if you won or lost. And and unfortunately, it was a loss for us. Yep. So plenty of people could look at that and see 10 v 11 for uh, the last 30 minutes or so, if my memory serves me correctly. And, and yep. think one thing, whereas uh, the reality might or might not be something else. Uh, you also had a, a goalkeeping change, which is probably just as uh, maybe just a little bit under, but still pretty debilitating. Not because of Ronak's ability, but because of the fact that goalkeeping changes completely changes how you defend set pieces or, or might defend set pieces, yada, yada, yada. Um, no, look, 100%. Yeah, that that was Ronak's um, first call up to first grade against Ponds. You know, so big, big, big steps. And, you know, I have faith in my goalkeepers and um, I had all faith in Ronak and the, the goals that were conceded weren't through goalkeeping errors. It's what, what happened 
in front of him. Now, Tom, let's let's look a bit further forward. Considering how many quality teams are in this league, I tend to believe that this weekend's match of the round against Ropes is a contest between two teams who will be fighting for limited top five spots. Do you sort of see it as that way as well? I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say based on that I haven't played a, a BDSFA game yet with with workers since I was here back in 2019. Uh, so, but what I've seen here in training with here with lads and our, and our games, our trial games, I think uh, I don't think we're going to be fighting for top five. I think we're going to be solid in the top five. I don't think uh, I don't know how ropes plays. To be honest, I don't really quite care how ropes plays. I don't really care how anyone else plays. I know that if we stick to our game plan and if we play good football, then that's where we're going to be. Uh, you scored a goal in a certain Australia Cup match, Tom. Uh, just a quick word on uh, your position this year and um, uh, can we expect more times <laughs> TG on the stage? How, how did I know that that question would come? But yeah, all right, go, I'd, go on. I'd be getting kicked <laughs> if I didn't ask it. <laughs> Look, I, I'm I'm happy to play any position I can for the team. All right. Uh, I'm obviously better, like every player has their specialities, but I think uh, I can understand how the, the team works as a unit, and I think I could play any position. Brilliant. Well, really well said. One final question. We're hitting right on that sort of five, six minute mark right now. I haven't actually spoken to you in, in podcast form, Darren, since you won that reserve grade grand final. To put it simply, is that one of the greatest? comebacks you've witnessed at club level football any level of football in your time oh it's up there with a few um I, i've had a few comebacks in, over the last 10 years in in finals and champions and champions and games like that but yeah look i think i think that one um last year was more rewarding because you know marry on with a team marry on with a club you know Three minor premiers, three teams in the the grand final, and and for us to stop the treble, um, what well, was a great achievement, and yeah, you go down two nil within ten minutes, and you look back at the previous weeks in the semi finals, and you go, yeah, this is going to be a long grand final, but yeah, you know, between the coaching staff, we made some tactical changes, um, worked. Got got the goals back and um, yeah, eventually got the win. So yeah, it was definitely up there. Boys, thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast tonight, and Tom as well. I'm not sure if you've just come here specifically for this, but either way, uh, appreciate uh, having one of the best free kick takers uh, join on the podcast. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys this Saturday. All right, see you Saturday, see Mark. You, Thank you. Cheers. Welcome back, Tom Guthrie in familiar colours, back at Blacktown Workers. Is he a nine? Is he a midfielder? I guess we'll find out this weekend. What are workers made of? Ropes missed out on the finals last year because of a slow start to the season, which had to coincide with a change of manager, of course, which you could put that down to. That change of manager, that manager has remained on this year. Has his impact been felt in preseason? Well, the 6-2 in round one said one thing. Perhaps this will tell you something else. Tonight, we welcome Ropes Crossing to the podcast for the first time in 2024. James Field makes his debut and Blake Fufus is tasked with media duties, not for the first time. Boys, both uh, you're both coming to your second season into the club, uh, but it's a first preseason under Tony Musket. He was obviously at the helm when your form turned around last year, about midway through the season. But I'll go straight to Blake for this one. What was his approach to his first preseason like? Preseason was um, wasn't very fitness focused. It was more ball work incorporated in the fitness. Um, there wasn't a lot of yeah, just strictly fitness based activities, laps, sprints, etc. It was mainly focused ball work integrated into that into the fitness. So plenty of passing drills. Make sure you get to the comb with quickness. Um, in terms of games, it was pretty um, pretty much picked up where we left off last year. Most of the squad left unchanged. So. Pretty much just getting back into our groove with the players that were available over the preseason, and yeah, try to hit the ground running. Sounds like a bit of fun, James. First game of the season wasn't ideal, wasn't an ideal one. But if you are going to lose to anyone, the champions isn't the worst uh, caliber of competition to do it to. But it was one 0 at halftime, so you guys were certainly in it. You came out in the second half, and that's when the goal started to pile on. So what sort of went wrong from for your perspective? Yeah, I guess as you touched on, um, you know, Marion being obviously the. Defending premiers, it's uh, obviously going to be an, a tough game coming up against them uh, any time of the year. Uh, I guess the positives we can take out of it is it's it's over and done with. We've got that one out of the way. Um, and in terms of what happened on the day, um, I think we certainly were in the game um, and for periods, especially in the first half. And then 
half time, I think there was a little bit of a lapse, about 15, 10 minute lapse, and Marion capitalized on that. Um, a few, you know, defensive errors, and then, um, yeah, the, the goals kind of came through. Positives are towards the back end of that half, the end of it, um, we managed to score two goals, and I think that's something that. You know, moving forward, we're always going to score goals. I think we've got that attacking threat. Obviously, Ahmed, um, you know, top goal scorer last year, and you know he's got off in good fashion already with two goals. So I certainly think we can score goals this year. It's just more of a um, defensive type of thing and, and tightening things up at the back. Yep, certainly they have the capacity to do that. Now going to Blake, you've got workers this weekend. Last season, they're a team that you drew four all with them and then beat them three one later on in the season. They haven't had too many personnel changes from last year to this year. So, you know, you can expect more of the same, something similar, perhaps. It's safe to say those games have been pretty competitive in recent years, though. And have you enjoyed them? And are you looking forward to this one? Yeah, workers. Um, yeah, always fun games. Um, the four all draw. That was a bit of conditions played in there. Nice quick pitch at workers as well as a wet day. That day was sitting down. Um, yeah, slips, spills, bad touches. There's, there's your four all. Um, the three one, yeah, that was when we were back half of the season, really hitting our stride in form. Um, everything seemed to click that day. Good win. Um, so yeah, looking forward to the challenge. James, just to wrap it up, you missed out on the top five last year, but by the end of the comp, everyone had come to respect the way ropes played. Um, outside of simply turning losses to draws and draws into wins, what are the key points that you guys have pinpointed, looked at in preseason since round one? that you're going to need to change or, or, or really hone in on if your guys are going to break into that top five this year? Reflecting on last season, we did give the title a little bit of a shake in terms of yeah, gaining that respect from um, you know the, the top sides, such as your workers and um, Mariong and, and teams like that. So I think moving forward this year, it's just more so getting off to a good start. Obviously, you know, losing to Mariong, not the best, um, but there were a few games last year, similar, similar um, scenario where we dropped a few points early and then that second half of the season, we really hit our straps, managed to, um, you know, get on a roll. And then I think it was just a costly couple of games in the first half of the season where we probably could have taken three points, ended up either a draw or potentially a loss. So I think this year, it's that first half of the season. If we can get, you know, at least six or five or six wins on the board, um, I think we'd be in good stead for the back end of the year because we can hit, hit a roll again. Um, we, we are a tough team to beat. So, yeah, I, I think... You know, this weekend is, is pivotal for us. If we can get off to a good start here and score some good goals, and um, I think defensively as well, if we can not concede as many, um, I think we can certainly go pretty far into the competition this year. Certainly no woes when it comes to going forward, and I think I think you're certainly right in observing that uh, if that defence tightens up like it did towards the back end of last year, then uh, certainly you'll be competitive and pushing for that top five. Uh, to James and to Blake for coming on the podcast such a uh, late time at night. I really do appreciate it. Best of luck heading into this weekend. Thanks for tuning in. It feels like they were kind of happy to admit that Marion are still probably a level above them. Maybe there are some teams in the comp who are still at a bit of a level above them, but they are working towards getting there in time. They're not there yet, but they're working towards it. A young team with a couple of older heads, it's a good recipe. Mariong and Winston Hills both respectively had underwhelming seasons in the WPL last year. Is that about to change? Mariong certainly thinks so. Mariong, welcome to season 2024. Unfortunately for you guys, a washout in round one. So technically your first game is a match of the round. Tough question right off the bat for Leah, because it hasn't got to do with her section of the pitch. Leah, you guys have proven you can defend. Do you think Mariong will be scoring more goals this season? I think so. I think we've really got a um, we've got we focus on our strikers this year when we were recruiting new players and we've got some new players that are definitely younger, a bit of a faster than what we've had previously. Um, I mean our midfield is like two years working together, so um better attuned to how each other play and um I, I think we've definitely got a chance of scoring more goals this year. Naji, let's extend on that a little bit more. Uh, tell me about your off-season, specifically uh, your coaching and player recruitment. I mean, player recruitment's definitely been a lot better than last year. I, mean, I don't know if you remember much about last year. I think when when round one hit, we only had 13 players in the team. So we're, de we're definitely doing a lot better than we were last year. The whole focus has been on the, the top third of the pitch. Uh, well, majority of the focus has been on the top third of the pitch. I mean, last year, you know, apart from a couple of games where we were extremely short on players, the girls were hard to break down. So there was only really one part of the pitch that needed a lot of focus. And yeah, we brought in three or four younger girls with a lot of flair, a lot of pace. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, that'll be a bit of a change in terms of what we saw last year, especially in the match of the rounds. 
games. Uh, Rob, welcome to the WPL, my friend. Um, in your own opinion, uh, and you can say whatever you'd like, what do you bring to the table as a coach, as a manager, whatever you describe your role as? Um, basically, all I do is pick up the cones for Najee. That's pretty <laughs> much it. Get the goals and cop from the girls. That's pretty much it. That sounds like uh, most people that try and help out Najee. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. uh, Najee, how are you guys going to weave around um, being on the wrong side of the treatment table last year? You know, you were. You, it was 2023 just a freak year for injuries. Um, have you made a, a adjustments to any approach this year in terms of maybe preseason or conditioning? Talk me through that. The player situation was, well, you know, it didn't really work our way. You know, we we started recruiting again in about round four. Um, so between preseason and the first three rounds of the comp, I think we had four, maybe five season-ending injuries. And again, they were all up that top third of the field. Um, so. So this year, look, it's been fixed. There's a lot of confidence in the girls. Preseason trainings, majority of it's been fitness as much as they hate it. Um, so a lot of the preseason has had a, a big fitness focus to it. I've got no doubt at all that it's going to be a completely different story this year. Leah, last question is for you. Winston Hills this week in the night of the round. Will you win? I think we've got a really strong chance of winning. Um, I'm just praying it's not going to be as hot as it has been and we can just play in some cooler weather. Um, but, you know, I think it's just really exciting to see how we all play as a team versus someone within our, our league. It's quite exciting. So if we get the win, great. But if we don't, we always learn something new. Absolutely. And really positive outlook on the on the course of the season from everyone sitting on the other side of this Zoom call. Certainly, guys, best of luck heading into this weekend. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If there was a lesson to learn, have they learnt it? Welcome back. And thanks for watching all three interviews. A couple of games did actually take place over the weekend. Parkley did in fact beat Winston Hills with a late 1-0 winner. So, one of the Blacktown teams are already sitting at the top of the league. Russell Rams also hosted Kellyville Colts in their first ever game as a WPL entity. They went down 3-1, but they can be pretty proud of their showing, I would have to say. This is what it looks like this weekend here. Workers, of course, have ropes in the match of the round. Marion are at home to Prospect. Quakers Juniors host Eastern Creek in the Green Derby. Tigers visit Ponds in the Hubbard Derby. Dooney take on Riverston in what could be an amazingly fun game with lots of goals. And they did actually go out last night of the Australia Cup, meaning that 4-1 uh, it was, by the way. And that means that we are now done in terms of Black Ten teams in the Cup, which is a big shame, but also congratulations to those who A, participated and B, made it to this point in the competition. Polonia visits St. Pat's as we head to the PL2 now. Park Lee take on Rudy Hill and what feels like something of a throwback. Town Rangers have Newbury, while Glenwood host Oakville. Russell Rams will still be at home this time and take on Castle Hill United in another Hills derby. Quakers Tigers take on Norwest in what could be another hard game. Kellyville Colts take on Quakers Hill Juniors in what I think could be a really interesting one. A grand final rematch as Park Lee and Holroyd face once again. And of course, the match of the round, you already know. Marion and Winston Hills. That's going to do it for week five of the Blacktown Premier League podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mark DiPoli. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you cue the outro music. Mm -hmm.